When First Blood was first released in cinemas back in 1982, it was something of an unexpected hit. The film was adapted from a novel, and it's essentially a more thoughtful meditation on the horrors of war and post-traumatic stress. Mixed in with social commentary about the war in Vietnam and the experience of returning veterans. The character of John Rambo is actually quite vulnerable, mentally scarred and rejected by society. And this film caught the attention of audiences both for its thoughtful commentary but also for its action sequences. And it seems that it's this latter element that studios really latched onto and saw an opportunity to create more of a franchise. And so three years later in 1985 they would release Rambo First Blood Part 2. And this film represents a seismic shift in tone and attitude uh, towards its central character and to the world that it was building. It would, of course, be phenomenally successful. Uh, I think when most people think of Rambo, this is the distinctive image they, they have in their mind from the second film, this, this film poster here. Sylvester Stallone was in peak physical condition when he made this film. And the emphasis is on action all the way. There are big explosions, there are hand-to-hand -hand fisticuffs, everything you can think of. But gone is the thoughtful meditation and the social commentary. And there is no hint of vulnerability about this version of Rambo. And for the time that it was made, this was absolutely the right decision, because as the box office proved, this was what audiences wanted. There would be fair the film sequels to come, but there was also a cartoon called Rambo The Force of Freedom, which in some ways set the template for cartoons like Robocop, which was also based on a very adult property that was adapted and morphed to make a child-friendly franchise. And of course, with any successful child's cartoon, there is a toy line to support it. And so we got our first Rambo action figures across a few different waves, and there was actually a ton of play sets and vehicles to support this line, which is really excellent. But aside from this initial wave, there wouldn't be any Rambo toys for a long time to come. That was, of course, until NECA acquired the license. And today, I'm going to be taking a look at the Rambo First Blood Part 2 action figure. The packaging, of course, is that clamshell plastic packaging that we used to see a lot from NECA. The paper inset for the background is a jungle scene, and we can see the film poster in the right-hand corner. Of course, we can also see the figure on full display there, and overall, I think this is really attractive, really nicely designed packaging, and is quite displayable. The reverse of the packaging has opted for a more artistic approach, so we can see uh, the bamboo cane there, and obviously Rambo's necklace, and some of his weapons. Uh, and there's a little bit of a bio there about John Rambo himself. The overall presentation and look of the figure once you get him out the packaging is really solid. I think this definitely captures Rambo, and it seems really screen accurate. So I think this is quite a striking looking visual figure. The body mold does seem to be recycling the Rocky one for the torso. And although I have some misgivings with this mold because I feel like Stallone was bigger and more ripped than this, I still think it's perfectly adequate and it's a really good likeness. And speaking of the likeness, I think the head sculpt is pretty strong. This is definitely recognisable as Sylvester Stallone, and is distinctively different from the Rocky figure head sculpt, which obviously had different hair and of course didn't have the bandana. I think the paint apps are ever so slightly off with mine, as you can see his right eye looks a little bit too far too askance there, it's just not quite central enough. But otherwise, I'm really, really happy with the paint apps on this figure. I think they've done a really nice job of the likeness. And I like that they've got the extra details in there. The bandana, although it's a little bit darker than perhaps it should be, is absolutely crucial for this character. Likewise, having the necklace there as well, and that's well painted and it, it works really well. And I also really love the scars. Uh, so there's wonderful paint apps in here to dirty the figure up and you know make him look like he's been in the jungle. Uh, so I think that's really excellent. But having those scars in there that are a different colour uh, to the flesh tone, I think is really, really nicely done. For articulation, his head does have that ball joint in the neck there. So that means, of course, that his head can spin uh, more or less 360 degrees. Uh, the hairpiece is a hard plastic, so there is some resistance there, but it does not stop uh, you turning the head as much as you want, which is really, really good. Uh, he does have ball jointed shoulders. Uh, these are quite stiff and you'd think they'd give you a greater range of motion than they actually do. So don't be deceived by that. But nevertheless, there is a good range of motion there. So you can kick the arm out at a fair distance. There is no bicep swivel, but there is a swivel at the elbow, which also is a hinge joint as well. So you can bend that arm roughly 90 degrees and you can move it from side to side as well, which is fantastic. Likewise, for the wrist, he's got the same sort of articulation there. So of course he can spin his wrist 360 degrees, but he could also hinge it uh, up and down and to the side. So this is really solid. 
As you can see, he does have the chest articulation there, the upper torso, so there's a bit of a ball joint in there, which means he can swivel his uh, upper torso from side to side and up and down a little bit as well. So this is really good. I like this kind of articulation. However, I do think in this case, it is a little bit unseemly having that big gap there between his lower and upper torso. He has ball joints in his hips, so he can kick his legs out a good distance, which is nice, and he can throw them forwards uh, and backwards a little bit as well. Again, he's got the same sort of joint in his knees as he does in the elbow, so his knees can swivel from side to side. They obviously bend 90 degrees, and he also has uh, the ankle pivot there as well, so that means his feet can rock from side to side, they can hinge forwards and backwards, but there is no swivel at the calf or the upper boot. In terms of accessories, Rambo packs a punch, which is just the way it should be. He comes with his heavy artillery assault rifle, a rocket launcher, his jungle knife, a grenade, an extra pair of closed hands, and another pair of hands. One is more well, slightly open, whilst the other one still seems pretty closed. The jungle knife does fit nicely into the pouch, which can be closed shut with the uh, the seal there. But a word of warning when, when removing the knife, uh, there is a danger that you can end up dislocating uh, the pouch from his pants because it is held on by a very small piece of plastic there. So uh, you might need to get your glue kit out, as I do, uh, to make sure that it's reattached. The knife itself is very nicely detailed though, uh, we can see all the individual grooves on that knife there and it's nice and shiny and the paint apps are well applied. The only thing missing is his bow and arrow. Now this might sound like nitpicking but I actually think it's very important because this film is really strongly associated with that bow and arrow and it's one of the key most iconic moments in the film. And frustratingly, NECA would go on to release an exclusive for a convention, which clearly has the image from the uh, the cartoon there. And he has the assault rifle and, of course, the bow and arrow. And if you look closely, you'll also notice he has a different head. He's got the more snarling head, which, again, I think is really appropriate for this character. So I actually think this would be my preference. But what are you going to do? But what we are given is pretty fantastic. I can't complain with the accessories we have here. There's a whole range of different looks you can create thanks to having this great variety of accessories. Uh, again, if I was nitpicking, I might say that the grenade feels a little bit too small when he holds it in his hand. But other than that, uh, I think these are really, really wonderful accessories. Like I said, they create a whole range of different uh, dynamic poses you can put them in and just really change uh, the whole look and feel of this figure. So uh, top marks for that. I think overall, this is a great figure. I think the mold is really, really good. I think the paint apps in the main are pretty well applied. And it definitely is screen accurate and really brings this character to life in toy form. So it's top mark from me. I really, really like this figure. I think it's excellent. For me, it's my preference over the Rocky uh, figures, but each to his own. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think if you got him, you wouldn't be disappointed. He's a really nice figure to have in the collection. And for me, I'd go so far as to say this is one of my favorite Sylvester Stallone figures in my collection. I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, please do give it a like. Uh, and remember to subscribe as I'll be posting more videos soon.